tukakulia pole 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 tukasikia masasi tukasikia masasi kisha ilikuwa siku ya sita masasi takuwa mingi tukakimbia tukakimbia na watoto hakuna kitu tukakimbia tukalala rugani kisha tukakuwa rugari tukamaliza rugari miezi mbishi kisha tukakwambia se barefije wote waende kibumba tunakuya tunakuya huku tunakuya tu mabashe tunatupa makini tunatupa tukafika na watoto tu tuko tunakimbia masasi Conflict between the government and various militias has consumed Eastern Congo for over a decade. More than one million people have had to leave their homes. In January 2009, a groundbreaking agreement between Rwanda and Congo seemed to offer a way to end the conflict and bring stability to the region. A joint operation would combine the two countries' military with local militias. Together, they would take the fight to a common enemy, the Democratic Forces for the Liberation of Rwanda, the FDLR. Photojournalist Susan Shulman travelled with the Rwandan Defence Force as they entered the Congo to confront the FDLR. A Hutu nationalist group, the FDLR was responsible for the Rwandan genocide in 1994. They fled from Rwanda to Congo and changed their name, but are still known to people here as the Interahamwe. They prey on the civilian population in eastern Congo, appearing from the bush to rob, rape and kill. An FDLR soldier who surrendered to the Rwandan forces gives an idea of why they're so feared. The FTLR are based in the dense forest of eastern Congo. The area is impassable to ground vehicles. Supplies have to be airlifted to an improvised landing zone hacked out of the jungle. Finding the FDLR on their own turf is not going to be easy. And this is no ragtag militia. They are highly organized, well armed, and have a clear aim. The Rwandan troops hire local villagers to carry their supplies. There are no jobs here. The villagers are eager for work. The Rwandans enter the heart of Walikali. Like most of eastern Congo, it can only be penetrated on foot. Far from any government presence, local militias have plagued the area for years. This one, Parako, joined the Congolese military in January to fight the FDLR. Local villages are yet to see much benefit from the new agreement. The Rwandans press on to the front line. The terrain is difficult, but they cover 27 kilometers in five hours. Here, they come across their Congolese counterparts in the bush. The alliance is fragile. There's distrust on all sides after long years of fighting among Rwanda, Congo and militias from both countries. So although the operation is a joint one, the forces operate in parallel. Eventually, the Rwandans make camp near the village of Langira. It isn't long before their presence draws out the local villagers, who've been in the bush, hiding from the FDLR. A partir de 1997, 
les indrahams sont venus dans notre milieu. Mais il reste à Bruce et puis il vient au village, il tue les gens hein, et avec des machettes. Mm. Mm. Habata joua se me kumbe uyu ni mutu mm -hmm. saa mie mm -hmm. Mbo, ile tu Na kupie Jote se me, jote se me kama yu Donke habata joua se me kumbe uyu ni bibi wa fulani Mbo, ubia na, na naolewa na ungine mwanaume mm -hmm. Mkumuona tu mchia, ana mukamata Na kuanza kulala nae, kiunguvu <coughs> Basi, mipango mingi <coughs> Ake katala na mukatakata He? Eh? He eh. Dile <coughs> Personne, tout le monde allait à la brousse, mais les autres à Goma. Puis chaque fois, on demande les secours au territoire, rien, pas de réponse, pas de quoi. Donc, toutes les personnes restent à brousse, comme ces personnes qui ne, hein, qui ne, pas, qui ne vont rien. Mais s'ils partent, ils les rentrent ici. Ils rentrent encore ici. Parce si que... l'opération vraiment ne pas, ne pas sera pas bien, en tout cas nous serons en danger. Car cette opération rate, vraiment nous serons en danger. Back at the Rwandan camp, a captured member of the FDLR reveals the scale of the problem. That's four and a half thousand well-armed men who've been living in the area for up to 15 years. Fighting the FDLR in this terrain is dangerous, even for the Rwandan Defence Force. The camp commander receives news of intense fighting nearby. One of his soldiers has been killed. A group of people has gathered below the camp. They left their village, Braza, as it had become too dangerous to stay there. The presence of the Rwandan forces offers them a brief period of respite from FDLR attacks. Fils de Mupenda, je suis quelqu'un de Massis, alors je parle contre l'Interaham. L'Interaham est vraiment, nous souffre beaucoup. Nous souffrons beaucoup contre l'Interaham. Ils sont là pour violer nos femmes, ils sont là pour tuer nos femmes, les enfants, les vieux et les vieilles aussi. These people don't know what the future holds. They've left their homes with no clear destination in mind. Their sole objective is to stay one step ahead of the Interahamwe. The Rwandans don't have enough manpower to halt their advance and protect the civilians. A smoke signal guides a helicopter in to repatriate the dead soldier's body. The region's so remote, there's no other way to reach the forward base. Operations against the FDLR continue but the Rwandans realize there's a limit to how much they can do here. We don't know what will follow next because yeah, our operations continue. We would very much like to protect the civilians, but uh, we are not capable of carrying out the, all the two tasks as, as we would want it to be, uh, to be done. If there was a force coming behind us, that would be fantastic, but it's not forthcoming. The FDLR continue to dominate the region. They don't want to negotiate. We don't In the end, it seems the Rwandans' efforts, and those of the Congolese government, will only give the civilians a temporary reprieve. 
When the Rwandan forces withdraw from one area, the FDLR moves back in to prey on the civilian population there. Donc il fait il veut faire le, la génocide qu'ils ont fait là chez eux oh, à Rwanda. Rwanda. Mm -hmm. Une fois si les militaires nous laissent comme ça, l'interahamu va vraiment nous tuer, nous tuer nous tous. Thank you.